Hi folks, a little devotional thought for you on the awesome revelation that we are made in the image of God. You've heard it before, but I want it to sink into you, deep into your spirit today. I've just been away on vacation with my wife and we've had a few days in a beautiful part of England called the Lake District. The mountains and lakes and great scenery and lovely picturesque walks. And reading these verses from Genesis chapter 1, which you'll be familiar with, has just reminded me again the immensity of God's creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 then says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every, every living creature that moves on the ground. God's intention is that his creation will show his glory across the globe. God is holy, God is sacred. Nothing and nobody can compare to him, the Bible tells us. Yet nevertheless, the next in line are you and me, humanity, made in the image of God. When we completely understand that, what part of God are we made into? What part of God's image are we made like, rather? Spiritual, mental, physical? But our intelligence, our understanding, our emotion, our humour comes from the fact that we are made in the image of God. This has implications for things such as justice and righteousness, for the fact that we need to be standing up against abortion, against sex trafficking, against racism. It's, it, it means that we should be creative and artistic in our thinking and in our actions. It means we should be standing up for peace where there is war. Justice and righteousness should be at the forefront if we are people who are made in the image of God. And reading those verses from Genesis reminds me that, number one, we can reason like God. In your ministry today, in your life today, God has given you the opportunity to seek his wisdom, to know his wisdom, to apply his wisdom. Humanity has the opportunity and the potential to reason in a godly way like nothing else on this planet. So when you're stuck in a problem, a situation, a difficulty, you can apply the reasoning and the mind of Christ because you are made in the image of God. Secondly, we can relate like God. God is three in one. God, it says in those verses there, let us make man in our image. God was built for relationship. He's built you and me for relationship, for community. That's why church is important. Even at this time when we're in lockdown, finding ways to stay connected and stay in community. And one of the most important things you can do for the people that you're ministering to is encourage them, remind them, support them that they are part of God's family. They were built, they were designed for community. Don't let people go it alone. Don't let people be lonely. Don't let people drift away from fellowship and from the family of God. Male and female equally created in God's image, those verses tell us. So not only can we reason like God, not only must we relate like God, we can re reproduce like God. Human Humankind has the responsibility to reproduce physically new life, but also we're given the mandate for creativity, for new ideas, for new things, for new ways of living in a godly way. And so when you reason like Christ, when you relate in the church, in the way that God wants you to. That opens you up to all types of creative ideas, creative thinking, creative relationships for the glory of God. And those verses tell us that God has designated his authority, he's delegated his authority to you and to I. Not just as Christian leaders, but as stewards of this world. We are supposed to rule like God. He delegates stewardship of the created world to us, tell, tells us to rule over and subdue. 
the earth, animals and birds. Now we spoil all that as humanity, but you can take that authority, that delegated authority that God has given you because you're made in his image and can, you can use that authority for his glory, not for your own self-gratification. You see, each of us has spoiled that blueprint from God by our rebellion, by our sinfulness, by our selfishness. But every aspect of God in us has been distorted and changed from the way God wants it to be. But God is a restorer. God wants us to recover the way we were meant to be. That's the story of the Bible, isn't it? Ultimately, through Jesus, we are part of God's recovery, rescue, restoration plan for this planet. And that's the most exciting thing of all time. Why don't you pause for a moment today and give thanks that you were made in the image of God. And why don't you grasp again what that means for you? It means that you can reason like God. It means that you can relate like God. It means that you can reproduce like God. It means that you can rule like God. When we, were dis when we rediscover this, and when we help others rediscover this as they turn away from their rebellion, then we become part of God's recovery plan, part of God's rescue plan, part of God's restoration plan, part of God's redemption plan for this whole planet. That's why you and I were put on here. So the earth will be covered with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Bless you.